The company Nothing has just released a new budget phone, known as the CMF Phone 1. Not to be confused with their Nothing Phone 1 from a few years ago. This budget model follows Nothing's bold design aesthetics that we've come to know. What makes this one particularly interesting at a first glance is their so-called interchangeable design, which had me wondering what this meant in terms of repairability. When I took apart the Nothing Phone 1 in 2022, its disassembly was so unnecessarily complex, making repairs much more difficult than they needed to be. Has Nothing improved upon this with their new model? They're certainly bold enough to show us lab testing videos of their phones being tested against water, dust, abrasion, and drops. So is this Nothing's first pro repair phone or just a gimmick? I bought one to find out. This particular model I have here is the base model with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage in black. Included with Nothing CMF was nothing much, just a USB-C cable, safety booklet, and SIM eject tool with the disassembly instructions being printed on the protective film. With the phone unpacked, it's time for a first boot to make sure it actually works properly before I take it apart. This phone costs only 200 US dollars or 400 dollars here in Australia because we're a little unlucky. And even after conversion rates, it's still 100 dollars more, most likely due to all the added taxes we have. But despite its price, it still has many common features, including an underscreen fingerprint sensor. It also has not one, but two SIM card slots, one of which can hold a micro SD card for expansion, something most high-end phones have forced users away from. To open it up, I assume we need to remove the screws from the back, but nothing is mentioned about it in the included booklet, only a warning not to modify or replace the battery yourself. There was, however, a QR code supposedly to take you to the quick start guide, but instead provided you guides for the accessories. So I'll just have to go off what was mentioned on the protective film we removed earlier. The screws are the most distinctive feature of this phone, giving it a somewhat industrial design. There is also a round puck known as the accessory interface that looks like the loop connector of an iPod Touch 5. However, on the CMF, it unscrews and reveals nothing more than a thread and some instructions, telling us to unfasten four screws and push to release. Assuming they mean the four screws on the back of the phone, this is where I'll start my teardown. There wasn't any area I could see where you could really dig your fingernails in to pry up the back, but I did get it unclipped with relative ease, as you would expect given we're supposed to be able to remove it. Inside, the first thing I notice is the warning not to disassemble the battery without authorization. Do they mean disassemble the battery cell itself, or not to remove the battery at all? It was at this point I would discover the vague instructions had me thinking I needed to press the puck to reveal some sort of interface pins. But it appears the reference to press was to aid the removal of the back case and not to reveal any hidden connector. As it turns out, this isn't a connector at all, but just a standoff for something to screw into. Also underneath was a hidden screw. It appears I totally misunderstood their meaning of a modular phone. The accessories designed for it are simple basic stands and lanyards that screw into place, and what I thought was a battery pack turned out to be nothing more than a card holder. I failed to find this information before purchasing the CMF phone. The phone isn't listed under phone, but CMF on Nothing's website and the link directs you straight to the purchase page where it lists some basic info. Clicking on any of this does nothing. It wasn't until later I discovered a learn more button that directed you to a whole nother website with the full information. Not a different web page, a different website. But a confusing website doesn't mean a bad phone. Let's see what's under this plastic cover. It appears the two tabs at the top and bottom of this cover are void if remove stickers and leave a series of dots when pried up. Underneath is the as advertised 5000 mAh battery, but how easy is it to remove? It appears nothing avoided the opportunity to make this battery user replaceable, which is incredibly strange considering they went to the effort to incorporate an interchangeable back panel. I'll need to remove the upper antenna to reveal the motherboard and its connections. It was held in with screws and clips, the clips being the strongest I've ever come across. Void if removed stickers are also present on the antenna we just removed and the speaker. 
We can now see the accessory interface, and there's no electronics connecting to it. To me this seems like a massive missed opportunity to have attached USB pins here, so the phone can communicate with accessories, allowing for a wider selection and functionality. But then again, this is their budget phone. Maybe they'll add more functionality to their more expensive models. But with all of Nothing's design elements removed, you can see it looks identical to most low-end Android phones. That's not a bad thing, after all this is made to an affordable price, but there's nothing special going on inside. Let's see if they at least made the battery easy to remove. There are a series of numbers to represent the steps a repairer needs to take to remove the cell. The real test will be if this adhesive will let go when pried, or whether it will require additional equipment to remove. Unfortunately, like most modern phones, the adhesive is too strong, requiring either alcohol or heat to properly remove. After some time on my heat plate, it lifts out easily. There are four cables running beneath it, so prying it out would be ill-advised. If you're following along at home, spend the time properly heating it to avoid damaging these cables. My particular battery looks a bit squashed at the bottom, and that wasn't for me. The charge port is next to come out. It's good to see it's modular and not soldered onto the motherboard like so many cheap phones. Once the top flex cables are detached, only a small strip of adhesive holds it in place. However, there is one antenna cable connecting to the base of this daughter board. The fingerprint reader is also located here. Like the first Nothing phone, it's an optical sensor. These often require calibration to function after a display replacement. This was the case with the first Nothing phone, although no calibration software was provided. But with the charge port removed, the only other major component left inside the CMF1 is its motherboard. One screw and some flex cables is all it takes to get it out of the midframe. The board is powered by a MediaTek 7300 5G, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It has a soldered on proximity sensor and LED flash. Attached to it are a 50 megapixel main camera, a depth camera, and a 16 megapixel front camera. But with the motherboard removed, the display assembly is left empty. On it was a QR code which didn't turn out to be some kind of hidden message, but just some serial number. But with that, the CMF Phone 1 has been completely disassembled. While the back is easy to remove, the remainder of the internals are no different to many other major Android brands. This phone reminds me greatly of the outcome of my teardown on Nokia's repairable series of phones. While there are a few different sizes of screws, each size is grouped to each component, which will make reassembly easy. While I haven't tested whether the fingerprint sensor can be replaced, if it's like any of the other Nothing phones I've taken apart, don't expect it to work on replacement. In fact, the whole option in settings vanished on my last Nothing Phone 1 after the teardown video and never returned. Another thing to consider is with the low cost of this phone, will it be financially viable to repair it when the battery wears out or the screen breaks? This may depend regionally, but parts may quickly be worth more than the phone is on the used market. I'll get the battery installed using its original adhesive as it's still plenty strong enough, before attaching the upper antenna. Then it's just the case of reapplying this plastic barrier over the battery before wiping away any dirt and fingerprints I've left inside the device before attaching the back panel. The slotted screws used to secure the back panel don't appear to be a standard size. No flathead driver I had fit correctly, and the smaller drivers that did fit weren't wide enough so care needs to be taken not to slip and scratch the screw or back housing while attaching them. Nothing does show a screwdriver on their website, which presumably comes with purchased accessories. Maybe that driver works better. But with the phone back in one piece, it's time for a test. The phone vibrated, but nothing is appearing on screen. So I opened it up to check my connections. As it turns out, the display cable somehow unplugged itself. You saw me plug it in, so it must have just not been seated correctly. Reconnecting it, the screen now works again. Now I can reattach the back panel, and we're done. So this is it, Nothing CMF Phone 1. 
an affordable phone with a unique design. Although I don't understand the point of the modular back panel if the battery is no easier to remove. It appears as more of a gimmick, but does provide a way to open the phone without having to battle adhesive, so that's a plus. Are you doing your own teardown or repair? Test your phone with iTest. Available for both iOS and Android, iTest provides the ability to test hardware functions of a phone or tablet, with both a semi-automatic mode or manual mode, allowing you to easily test functions that would otherwise be too complicated without the aid of such an application. These include things like the compass, gyroscope, proximity and light sensors, or even screen burn-in. At the end of testing, you can get a nice little overview of your results and easily share them if needed. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.